All right, and welcome back to Do News. I am your host, the King of Do, and we're going to take a quick look at the markets and dive right into the news. We'll keep it short. Uh, Bitcoin is up about 1.5% right now. Big mover today, Dash, on some news, and I'll cover that shortly. Uh, Monero's up a little bit, and that pretty much does it for the top 10. Nothing of major significance other than Dash. Uh, other winners today, as you scroll down, Dodge, the good old Dodge coin, uh, up a little bit, 13 points. Factum up 10 right now, and uh, Pivix on a tear. As expected, it's been sitting in the 40s for a while. I've been waiting for it to move into the 30s. And uh, a little bit of news driving that, um, and I think it's got a long ways to go. We'll cover that. ARC is well in the news. I'll be covering that. Up uh, about 11% right now. It's actually come down a little bit. Um, it was a little bit higher than that. It had a nice little run. And then Edgeless up, and uh, not sure why on that one. Did not find any news on that. Verge up 13 and cloak coin continuing to climb 13 and a half so that pretty much does it for you nothing of major significance it's actually been kind of nice guys had a nice holiday fourth of july took the day off um enjoyed the barbecue enjoyed some freedom here in america what what's left of it <laughs> um you know i had to go somewhere to even shoot fireworks because i can't do it where i'm at they took that privilege away um for our safety and uh you know i had a friend tell me that that's the reason why they're probably uh, going to take away Bitcoin someday or try to outlaw it. It's because uh, it's for our safety. At least that's what they'll claim. So um, it'll be interesting. We know that the government is spending, spending billions of dollars on anti-cryptocurrency um, efforts. Uh, mostly uh, targeted, at least they state that it's targeting um, illegal activity. Uh, cannot confirm, cannot deny. I have no idea um, if it's a you know uh, a bigger picture than than what it sounds like. But the amount of money that they're spending and they're taking it very seriously. So um, you know, at some point, at some point, regulation is going to hit this stuff hard. Um, it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be confusing. It's going to be a lot of chaos. It's going to be some great buying opportunities. Um, and uh, when the dust settles. Uh, this stuff is not going to go away, guys. This is something that uh, we're so early. We're so, so early. Um, you know, we have these crazy predictions about what's two years away. Um, none of them will probably come true. But your wildest dreams about ten years away um, are extremely likely to be true, and then even more so. Um, so hang in there, guys, um, when the regulation hits. It'll eventually come, and they'll try to scare us. They'll say that this stuff is fueling terrorism around the world. Um, but if you actually look at the numbers, and it's nothing. I said it in my last video, there's a lot more crime happening with U.S. dollars in cash right now uh, than there is in the entire crypto sphere. So uh, I'm not really worried about it. Um, in fact, it's a joke, and it's ignorance to, if anyone says otherwise, uh, based on pure math. All right, let's move on to the news. Uh, we've got NIM in the news again, guys. NIM is on a tear. You guys know that I love NIM. I'm, I've loved it for a very long time. Um, it's been it's known as the sleeping giant. It's been sleeping for quite a while, and it, it's awakening. There's this this. Uh, it's not a great awakening. That's still coming, but there's this small awakening happening. I, mean, I, I can feel it. Um, having followed NIM for a while now, um, and and have a pretty good cadence of you know, how things roll in the NIM world, things are happening. Um, it, 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 as funny as it sounds, it started with a booth at Consensus. The fact that they were even there was like, what? Um, you know, it was the first time they showed their face probably anywhere in America, or at least that I've seen. Um, and then, um, then, then we've got some marketing. You know, I told you guys that they have this new uh, YouTube channel, um, which is great. It's all in English. Um, and that's fantastic. So they're working really hard on that. Uh, the, you know, they have these these grandiose plans for international um, expansion and uh, and um, trying to influence developers around the world to onboard the platform. And um, I'm starting to see these little things happen. You've been around cryptocurrency for a while. You start you you kind of know what I'm talking about. It's like 
um, you'll start seeing these cool little projects like in, in, in Reddits and things like that pop up where you're like, wow, people actually do use this technology. And um, that's starting to happen with NIM. It's this, it's this little rumbling um, that's starting to happen. Um, uh, one that I found uh, recently, I uh, uh, found it today actually, a, a cryptocurrency converter for your for um, iPhone, iOS. Um, so also work on your uh, tablets and things like that. But um, it's got NIM on it, right? Um, and that's a cool little feature and that, that NIM is included um, in this converter. Nice little converter built to handle NIM. So somebody took the time, you know, that, that's what it's really about. Someone just took the time and considered NIM among the rest. These little things, and I'm just starting to feel these little things here and there. Um, this one right here is um, called Landstead, and essentially using NIM blockchain technology, it's a, it's a uh, complete governance system for uh, land uh, property registry and usage and ownership and things like that. Um, all built on the NIM blockchain, and they have a nice little video as well. Um, make sure you guys go check out the video when this is over if you want to know more. Um, Landstead built on the NIM platform. So, you know, little things like this that, that people are actually developing on it. This is, this is fascinating because I know there's a lot of development happening in Japan. We know that, right? And probably more in China than here in the U.S. But to see something that's actually written in my native language gives me hope. Um, that uh, there's a lot more adoption going on than, than, than I can uh, see. Um, and it's really, really exciting. Um, they have a fantastic blockchain with fantastic technology. They recently lowered the fees to attract more developers. They're, and um, things are just happening. Little news things like that. And the developers are starting to come out of the cracks. Um, you know... Um, I saw a Reddit post the other day of a, of someone using NIM uh, for developing their project. They didn't ask me anything, and it was a great little post, and he was just talking about what he's developing on the NIM platform. Just a normal guy, normal developer, but he's using this platform. He talks about why he's using it and why he's choosing to uh, 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 go the NIM route when you know most of the world right now is like, well, I'm going to hop on the Ethereum train. So it's really fascinating to see that, and... Um, I think it's important that we pay attention to that. I'm not here to like really like pump it when I'm talking about uh, as far as like pricing and things. I'm not trying to tell you guys to go buy NIM and things like that. I uh, what what I what I'm talking about here is that there's there's something happening here with NIM and there's this momentum building um, that we should be expecting big things in 2018 in particular. Um, they are making very clear and obvious investments. Um, in their marketing efforts, and typically you don't do that until you have a product ready, right? Uh, very rarely do you go out and do a lot of marketing before you have a product. Now it's it's done a lot, I guess. Uh, you know the video game industry is pretty good at uh, getting you to buy video games before they're completed these days. <laughs> but um, you know it's a good sign. It's it's a really good sign. They're making the right steps, um, headed in the right direction, and. Uh, just something, just something to be following because you know this is a top, um, a top ten uh, cryptocurrency blockchain technology. Absolutely. So it's worth paying attention to, guys. Um, it's important to note Ethereum isn't the 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 end all be all. Um, I believe in a lot of blockchains uh, that can find their niche. And NIM definitely has a unique proposition, um, a unique offering that other blockchains that I, when I look at the top 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 list, that, they, that others just don't offer. Um, so I do believe um, it can carve its own space. Um, I enjoy the fact that the price is relatively stable. Define that. <laughs> Define relatively stable. Uh, when it's at 20 cents and it goes up two cents, that's quite the gain, right? But um, it's relatively stable considering. And um, yeah, I, I just think it's I just think it's something that you guys should be following. So make sure you guys uh, go check out the new Nim channel. I would encourage you to go to the Nim Reddit if you haven't and subscribe to that too. Those guys over there are fantastic, really good people. 
Um, they're excellent at asking, uh, answering questions. Um, Bittrex the other day was having issues with like um, some some orphan blocks and things like that. Um, they 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 help the the community kind of rallied together and helped each other out, helped understand what was going on. It was just a really good uh, really good sign of people just taking care of each other. So it's a very safe place. You'll learn a lot there. If you have a question about it, go check it out. Moving on. Um, we got Steemit um, proposing another hard fork already. So <laughs> Steemit just likes to hard fork every other day. Um, this would be like their like 19th or successful hard fork or something like that. Um, if this one goes through. So this is a proposed hard fork called Velocity. And uh, I'm definitely in favor of this. Essentially, what they're going to do is they're going to reamp the system so that, that we can start mass adoption mode. If you're not familiar with Steemit, Steemit is a social media platform built on a blockchain. If you haven't interacted with a blockchain before, go to Steemit. Go check it out because um, everything you see is on a blockchain. Um, yeah, it's fantastic, really. It's, it's mind-blowing that it's all on a blockchain somewhere. But um, So go, go check it out and... Um, the hard fork is going to essentially allow new users to sign up much more quickly. Okay, It's also going to allow the adoption rate to be governed. Essentially, there's more supply than essentially the governance wants to allow in. There's a little bit of a bottleneck uh, right now, and, and, and it's for good reason. It's, it's a little complex. It's a little bit of economic theory and things like that as well. But um, more, most importantly, though, is um, they just need time for scaling the blockchain properly. And uh, if you just let everyone who wants to join join, we'd have a big problem. Um, so, there, so the new proposal is going to help um, in the governance and ensure that we're not growing too fast or uh, maybe even too slow. I don't know. But... Um, there's a lot of demand right now. It's growing at a crazy rate. Uh, Steemit is legit. It's very legit. Um, and uh, it's worth checking out. Um, other things in this particular hard fork in regards to the new users and, um, is that basically you're going to start out with zero power whatsoever. You're, and if you're not familiar with Steemit, you need Steam power to be able to give rewards. And essentially there was abuse in the back, uh, back in the day. Um, where people were creating accounts just to make money, right? Making a lot of bot accounts. So they essentially have taken that capability away, if that makes sense. So just keep that in mind. And that's why I'm a big fan of it is that, um, you know, we need to open this up. The sky's the limit. Um, people have crazy predictions about what Steemit could actually become. You know, people, if you actually look at like Facebook's market cap and things like that, people are like, oh, Steam, it's going to make us all rich. And, you know, I'm not I'm not really a big believer in that, but this is something I definitely do believe in. And it's it's my privacy online is completely abused. Um, and that's coming from a digital marketer. You should be super concerned. I have, uh, you know, a lot of people try really, really hard to protect your your privacy and they you know but it is centralized um the fact that if someone hacked amazon right now they would have everything i've ever ordered in my life um uh, amazon already has that they abuse that power by serving me ads but they do they do um a good job of governing that that data but are they doing a good job of protecting it i question that i, I I'm, I'm only left to wonder we don't know wouldn't it be nice to know that like all of our personal data was like encrypted somewhere and, um, you know, super safe? Well, the truth is, is for all you know, some guy just needs to walk to a server and stick a USB in and walk out. We don't know. We really don't. And um, so I'm a big fan of, uh, of privacy. I have, you know, I work with a bunch of, uh, I, I call them kids, but they're, all, they're young adults um, and they're actually very mature um, my company hires some very, very good people, um, very smart people, and I, I really, really pay attention to them because, uh, you know, 
they're just a, they're just a little younger than me, but they, they, they're completely different in a way. I think they represent the, the gap um, between the generations um, that they're in and, and that I'm in. And in particular, I've noticed a lot of them just straight up just done over with Facebook, right? Completely deleting their accounts. I had one person this week tell me, deleted his account. And um, so that's a shout out to you, Aaron, by the way. He's been, he's been wondering if I've, uh, if I've given him a shout out uh, and uh, now I can officially say that I have. He, uh, he, he He's actually never watched the show, but um, <laughs> he always asks if I've given him a shout-out yet, and I was like, well, I should probably do that. Um, so he quit Facebook, and, um, you know, I, I basically want to. Most people I know that use it are doing it because of social obligation. I honestly continue to use it out of social obligation, mo like strictly to my family. I don't feel like I owe anything to my friends, but I definitely owe it to my family to to um, to stay on that platform. But I sure wish I could have a little more privacy um, in regards to just what I do on Facebook in general, the apps I download and all those things. Uh, face Facebook it does not have a good track record uh, compared to Amazon, at least, um, that I've seen of taking care of our privacy um if at all, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so anyhow, a little rant there, but steam it, I believe in the future of a decentralized, um, you know, uh, platform such as this, um, I've seen people on steam it, literally, um, when they do their introduce myself, they literally say, I'm introducing myself to everyone, but I actually created this account specifically to be um, anonymous. And I think that's so fascinating. Um, does that mean I can truly have like an alter alternate identity that no one truly knows unless I choose to tell someone? Um, and I know that, you know, that's kind of weird to some people, but anyone who's ever played like a, a m massive multiplayer online, you essentially become this other identity. No one knows who you are you actually are able to build a reputation within that community, build economic wealth in that community. And um, so I've seen it myself, those type of concepts actually come to fruition um, and actually uh, mean something to people, deep, deeply mean something. Um, and uh, I'm kind of going on a rant on this video, but you know, some some this is a random thing I think about when I, when I think about having identities and you know, we're so quick to judge some people who are like, oh, you're just a, a nerd gamer or something. You play games all day or you know, um, a lot of people get a lot of flack for for MMOs and things like that. But you know, I think we need to be careful with that kind of stuff, guys. We do need to be careful with the judging of people like that because um, I often I oft I often wonder this. Who am I playing with right now? When I'm playing a game, who am I playing with right now? Where they have a, a, a legitimate, whether a physical or mental disability, something like that. And this is their actual uh, freedom in a way, if that makes sense. Um, that this identity that they've been able to create, they don't have the, the physical attributes or the mental attributes or even the opportunity because of where they live maybe or, 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 or the, the hand they've been dealt to, to ever um, strive for something that, um, you know, is great. And uh, really at the end of the day, you know, what is great is what's great to you. You know, uh, don't ever live life trying to live to, up to the Jones, Joneses next door, okay? Um, if I tried to live up to everyone else around me, I would have to go buy a new car and carry it alone 24-7. Because every single person I work with, it feels like they just have all these new cars in the parking lot. And I don't, I don't roll that way. I like not being tied down um, uh, by a bank loan. And I like... Uh, I, I, I guess I just kind of get off on the idea that I have the cheapest car, I have the worst car in the parking lot, and every morning I get to smile because I got to work too, and I got there on time. I'm more like it's more cost effective, right? Anyhow, 
kind of going on a rant there for a little bit, guys, but those are things that matter to me, and, you, and I like to share those things with you guys, so you know a little bit about me, so hopefully you like that stuff, you like that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe, I love, I love to talk about that kind of stuff, I love to hear the comments that you have. ARK in the news, ARK is going to be available on uh, the Ledger hardware wallet, um, if you um, don't have one yet, and you do own cryptocurrency, I don't know what you're waiting for, I actually have a link down below, you can buy one on Amazon, there's a wait right now, pretty much anywhere in the world uh, if you're trying to get a hold of these but um, use my link um, and help support the channel and um, make sure you have a hardware wallet they've added arc um, today and based on that news price spiked pretty dramatically and that I showed you at the beginning that it was up and uh, so arc uh, making making waves uh, pun intended there um, yeah so that's really great I, uh, I like ARK. I don't know why I like ARK, to be honest. It was one of those coins that when it first came out, I just kind of like was watching all the YouTube videos of all the devs. And, you know, I said, I said you know what? These guys are really, really smart. I'm not really a huge fan of the reasons why they're creating their currency, the way that they're doing it. I'm not the hugest fan. Um, but... The team involved is kind of what does it for me on, on ARC. So that's just a personal thing, but I like ARC. Um, so ARC is uh, uh, making some firsts um, by being added. It's going to be the first delegated uh, proof of stake blockchain um, and the first JavaScript blockchain to be put on the hardware wallet, which is exciting. So, you know, if there's any other uh, JavaScript blockchains that you enjoy out there, um, maybe you'll see it soon. Um, but I'm really fascinated. Ar the turnaround time for Ark to knock this out uh, and 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 uh, hook up with the Ledger guys, pretty cool. Um, unicorn, or wait, Unicoin? Yeah, Unicoin, guys. Unicoin is a uh, esports coin, essentially. And the only reason I'm talking about it, and trust me, this is the only reason why I would talk about this coin, guys is uh, Mark Cuban is officially an investor in this. Or so people say. So, they're stating it on their site. All right. And I need more validation than that. That's for sure. Um, I'm afraid, you know, my, my radars are going off a little bit on this. I even looked at the white paper and I was like, mm not a huge fan um never heard of it before if you've heard of it before please share below if you've ever heard of this before but um unicoin so this is their white paper and i i can immediately tell you guys that this this stuff just smells it smells and it's just fascinating because mark cuban's in it i don't know if it does he have kids that play video games or something there's some reason that uh mark cuban um, is all about this, but if you scroll down here, um, immediately you see a very well-known game, Dota 2, in the esports world, featured here. Uh, do they have the licensing agreement to be able to even put this or associate with this? It just seems cheesy to me. Like, this is super cheesy. Just a little bit too much, guys. Um, this is not the type of imagery I would be using as a professional digital marketer if I was trying to market for an esports betting coin, essentially. This isn't it. This is not it. Um, and then you come down here and you have, you know, it's just, you know, it's written pretty well. Um, I'll give it that. Um, but, you know, it's doing, it's, it's selling, it's selling everything but the coin, to be honest, guys. It's really trying to sell, um, you know, the esports industry and how there's so much opportunity. And I honestly feel like they're just trying to cash in on all the kids out there who play video games that um, enjoy cryptocurrency and like cryptocurrency, um, like the betting, um, even though they shouldn't be betting, surely not as a child, um, but they do. <laughs> I just feel like they're trying to cash in on it, and, and they've got quite the team. And if the Mark Cuban thing is real, if it's real, if Mark Cuban really invested in this, Mark, I hope you're watching. Give me a call, bro. You and me could sit down and we could we could vet some coins together because um, you need you need some help. This doesn't feel right. 
And if it's just because there's so much money being made right now, it feels like you can throw money at it and make money, yeah. But I have a hard time believing that this is real. If you guys know anything about it, I, I don't want to call people scammers until it's a scam. Please don't ever use the, the, the four-letter word scam and, until after it's happened. Uh, there are people out there that um, are, you know, hopefully trying to do the right thing. I'd like to believe that the majority of people are trying to do the right thing. I'd like to believe these guys are doing the right thing. But I do know that I have so many red alarms right now that I wouldn't touch it and I wouldn't even look at it. Um, there are much better coins to invest in. Um, I, you know, um, I talked about like uh, 1337 leak coin recently a little while back. Trust me, guys. I'd put my money in that every single time over this. Like this is not even close. Um, Cause at least those guys are like real people and actually developing something real and are transparent. Um, and uh, you know, they, they, they also want to uh, be an esports coin of sorts and help fill that gap. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Um, so I thought I'd show you guys that dash in the news dash blowing up because of this little article here talking about their three pillars. Um, essentially they're, they're breaking the company up. I wouldn't say breaking it up, but really they've defined the foundations of their, of their enterprise or of their, I don't even know what you want to call it. I guess it is technically a decentralized autonomous organization, but they're, they're splitting it up. So we got the dash core, the dash force and dash labs. And uh, essentially, Dash Labs is going to kind of be the same concept that, that NIM was doing as far as like trying to create a place where people can come and gain support um, for their platforms. Um, and that's really good. This is good stuff. We want to see this happening with all cryptocurrencies. We need all developers. You know, I work with a bunch of developers and I have no idea why in their right mind they're not doing this on the side. This is like crazy opportunity. Um, there, you know, I've heard, I have now heard multiple people, multiple people in the Ethereum community, not one person, but multiple. And I've seen multiple articles quoting multiple people all say that they don't know a good Ethereum programmer that is not a millionaire. Straight up. Okay. Straight up. So, you know, it would kind of behoove you that if you actually develop in one of these languages already, why aren't you doing something? Figure something out. Um, if you don't have any good ideas of what to do or where to begin, uh, contact me. Um, you know, I have a billion ideas, um, and I'm sure as heck not about to sit down and start learning programming from scratch um, for a particular blockchain. Um, but, uh, you know, if you need a good idea, just give me a call. Uh, Pivx. Pivx in the news. Um, coin blown up as well. Pivx has been on a terror, guys. And rightfully so. Rightfully so that, uh, you know, if you're not familiar, maybe you missed the episode. Uh, they finally did uh, uh, proof of knowledge or, or uh, essentially uh, it's never been done before. Zero knowledge proof is what it's called. Um, and uh, they pulled it off. They basically did a test and it worked. And um, that's what shot the price up. Okay, so they actually have a piece of technology that you don't really find anywhere else. Now everyone's working on it, lots of people working on it, um, but essentially they claim that ours is ready to go, and they're getting ready to roll that out. So uh, you know the price is moving up, and then this, um, this has been in the roadmap for a long time, guys. That they're gonna have a point of sale uh, system here, and. Uh, this is good. This is great. I'd like to see uh, more of this happening with a lot of a lot of particular cryptocurrencies. Uh, I think it shows that they're they're actually trying really hard to be legitimate, and so um, that's really exciting. Really exciting. So it's up up a few pennies today for sure. It was about up twenty five cents or so at one point, but uh, heading back down a little bit as uh, the Asian markets always like to take profits, it seems, after about two to three hours into the market. I've been noticing that lately. Anyhow, um, so that's it for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure you subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment about anything. And I'm sorry I ranted a little bit. I know you guys like it short.
but I'm just a little too passionate sometimes, and I go off on a tangent, so I apologize. Plus, come on, guys. I took the day off yesterday. You guys can give me a few extra minutes, so I appreciate you guys sticking around for the whole thing. Um, uh, head on over to Steemit. Uh, make sure you guys um, are following me on Steemit as well. That's a great platform. Get signed up. Join the party over there. It's a good time. All right, guys. Um, thank you so much again for stopping by. I hope you guys had an awesome 4th of July. And if you were somewhere else in the world, it was still the 4th of July. So I hope it was awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's it from me. I am the King of Dew. May the Force be with you.